know, I got started in the music industry after I met Kirk Hammett, you know, a certain guitar player for a band some people might have heard of. And um, we became really good friends, and I was his guitar roadie at first. You know, you don't even call it a guitar tech because we're carrying a combo in to backyard keggers, you know. And um, one day he asked me if I wanted to learn a chord. And then he taught me some random Rolling Stone song, and I can't remember what it is. And um, six months later, I was in the band, you know. Um, we were at a rehearsal, and he asked me if I wanted to play a song, and I played Judas Priest, Grinder. It was the first song I ever played with Exodus. And uh, they asked me if I wanted to join, and been here ever since. You know, um, once I picked up guitar, the bands I loved were my influences, you know. Um, you know, Rainbow and Ted Nugent and ACDC and Frank Marino and Robin Trower and Michael Schenker, UFO, Thin Lizzy and Scorpions and just, they're still my, my heroes to this day, you know. <laughs> my musical uh, tastes haven't changed much. I still listen to the same stuff. I mean, obviously I've added a lot of stuff on since then, but you know, um, if I was trapped on a deserted island with the UFO catalog or, or even just Rainbow Rising, I'm perfectly happy. I don't need anything else. One of the most memorable moments in my career was, um, I don't know, there's, there's awesome little small ones and then there's gigantic ones, like, you know, headlining Madison Square Garden was pretty epic and I'll never do it again. <laughs> like, you know. But it was cool to do it once, you know, um, sold out Oakland Coliseum Arena, where I've seen countless shows you know, as a kid. That was awesome. Um, but just being able to do this at all, that's enough memory for me, you know. One of my proudest career achievements, you know, we've got to go back to the first album, making that album. That album still stands the test of time today and Bonded by Blood, this, all the songs on that album are constantly requested, you know, there's there's no filler and um, people still respond as strongly to those songs as anything we ever did. You know, like, we were just kids, they had no idea what we were doing or, or if we were adding a branch to the metal tree, you know, but um, yeah, you gotta be proud of that shit. Uh, the most valuable thing I've learned in my career is to uh, pay attention to the business side of things. You know, I mean, when you're young, you don't want to. Maybe Exodus in our early years were really preoccupied with having fun. You know, certainly we were. Um, but, you know, like when the band broke up in the 90s, we were in debt. We had nothing. You know, we're a band that operates without debt, you know, now. You know, we operate on a completely balanced budget and uh, we keep it that way. So yeah, watch the business end of things. Unfortunately, I mean, you have to. Uh, you wish you didn't have to. You wish you could just play guitar. Advice I give to someone starting out in a band is um, play for the love. Don't play for, you know, delusions of like stardom and all that. Cause you know, I mean, I, we're, we're still a struggling non-wealthy, paying the bills, sometimes barely banned, and we've been around forever. So just play because you love it. Listen to Angus Young. Don't listen to anybody else. You know, you learn the sweet barpeggios and shit later. You gotta listen to Angus and Malcolm. They'll teach you everything you need. You know, um, how I stay creative is I just love riffs. I mean, I love, love riffs. I love writing them. I, I write them in my sleep. I write them when I'm walking through a grocery store. You know, inspiration can hit anywhere and I'm constantly searching for a new way within my band's parameters and my own style of like, you know, uh, stringing notes together, you know, in chords. And, and I love it. I, I love the process, you know, and um, when you when you find you're onto something that's truly killer, but then the magical combination, like maybe you have four different versions of a riff, and then you find the right right way to put them together, and it just brings a smile to your face, and you know you got something. That's what it's all about to me. Is that I I just love riffs. I'll write them when I'm old and laying in my deathbed. I'll probably write a riff right with my last breath.
my writing process is just jamming. You know, it starts with a guitar and you just play. And I, I don't sit there and play like haphazardly. You know, I'll have an idea of what I'm trying to achieve and no way at all of knowing how I'm going to. But, you know, if I want something that's super savage and riffy and, you know, and pentatonic, yeah, I'll work around those, that framework, you know, until something cool happens. And sometimes it happens immediately. You know, sometimes a song will happen to be done in an hour. Sometimes, like the new one I'm working on right now, I've got about five days into it, and I think I, think I just nailed down the principal riff because I had 10 versions of it, 20. You know, like, which one's the right one? I don't know, they're all killer. You know, and most people would have been happy with it, but you know, I just had to find the one, you know? You know, I had to make 20 into one. And sometimes it sounds like there's 20 riffs in there. But you know, just whatever happens, you know, I'm just gonna follow the riff. Tom, my drummer, he just got back from a, a vacation he went on and, um, and he's all really eager to jam. And I said, we're not there yet. You know, I, I need, a stockpile of riffs and then we'll come in then we'll flesh them out and sometimes when when we get together the entire song is done sometimes it's 90 percent done sometimes it's an idea that completely does a 180 and is nothing like what it started out when it's finished and the whole thing will transpire with just him and i you never know but like right now i, I told him be patient you know I'm, I'm working on having some stuff to like to uh, flesh out, you know, when we jam. But um, yeah, sometimes, you know, you hear the beat in your head and then you really hear the beat because I don't waste my time with like demo home recording and all that. I know what's going on. I know where I'm going. And uh, we're still super old school. I just record things on my phone. If, I, if my old four track cassette recorder still worked, I'd still use it. Because I had one that has a built in mic. So I didn't even have to bother with miking. I just like leaned it up against the amp you know, I'm just, for me personally, I'm better off just working by myself with a riff and, you know, I grab my phone so I don't forget it. What I look for in a guitar tone these days, it's the same as I always have. It's got to be aggressive. It's got to be thick. It's got to be crunchy as fuck. It's got to be in your face, you know, and like, um, and I'm constantly chasing tone. I'm like one of those guys. There's a lot of guys who been around as long as I am, and they don't even know how their guitar rig works. The tech put it all together. They, they don't know what gauge strings they use anymore. <laughs> Like, and um, I'm still a total gear nerd and I'm constantly like buying and acquiring new pedals that I hope will do this or that and I'm trying them all out. And I'm always searching for tone, the holy grail, you know. Um, and every album's different. Every tone, it sounds like me, but everyone's different. And, but that's cause, you know, life would be boring without the, the pursuit of tone because I'm not gonna go in and just say, just fire it up, because that takes all the, the pleasure out of it, you know, like running, you know, like our joke in Exodus is like running a big muff into a big muff. Will it sound good? I don't know, but has anybody ever tried it? I'm gonna, <laughs> like, let's see what the fuck happens, you know, um, and you find really cool stuff that way, you know, you start plugging things that weren't designed to go in an effects loop, put it in the effects loop. What's the worst that can happen? Sound like shit, you know? What's unique and distinct about my tone? That's a hard question to answer because it's all so much based in the hands. Other guys have played in my rig and they don't sound like I do. But you know, there's, there's so many variables, you know? It's like, I, my action is higher than most guys I know. By the time after a long tour, it's ridiculously high because I keep going to my tech like higher, higher, you know? And it, it, it's a drawback on the lead guitar side of things, but it's full on destructive on the rhythm side. And I don't care about the solo shit, you know, I just care about the riffs. And, um, you know, the way I hold my pick at a slight angle, so it gets a little scrapey sound, you know, when I play and it adds almost the sound of a little more gain. And people think there's gobs of distortion in my tone and then they play my rig and it sounds clean in their hands. Um, just there's all these different things, but um, you know, I just wanted to punish. It's gotta hurt. Yeah.
My most used guitar these days, on the last couple of tours, um, well, I don't have the Blood guitar here. That's the one that everybody's familiar with, you know. Um, I don't take that one out that often, and I did take it out on the last tour. Officer Holt gets tons of love. The V's. Um, this one I've been jamming on every day at home, the LTD, the Snow White one. Um, most all of these have some form of the Floyd Rose Upgrades by Futon. The V has the first white hardware they ever did. You can see the white Floyd pieces and stuff. This has red, that has red. That's got blue, that's all blue hardware in the gold Floyd. And uh, you know, big brass blocks, you know, get out the Dremel and remove some wood. So it, it you know, free to, free to move and um, just makes them better, you know? But yeah, the, um, the cop guitar, gets lots of love, you know. One of my best friends, you know, is a retired sheriff. And um, I decided to do like kind of a, you know, I got this idea to do like a law enforcement guitar. And um, it started with a random eBay search. Like literally, you couldn't have scripted this. Like I, I, I put in a search for like police badge. And about the fourth one, literally the first page, about the fourth or fifth one was a brand new, Mint condition, Holtville, California police badge. So the whole guitar was designed around a badge I found. They're like, oh, this is just so sick. So my friend sent me all the bullet shells. They go from 50 caliber down to 22, 12 gauge knobs. And then, you know, we went with the blue and uh, ESP did this beautiful gold leaf on it and just stunning guitar. Amps, the Marshall Jubilee. Heavily boosted with gains pretty low on the heads. I got the mid boost, signature mid boost, and a super overdrive. Over, the drive is all the way off. It's just crunching up the head. And then I have this Goop Tech pedal, which adds a resonance control to the effects loop because the Marshall doesn't have one. So I'm able to get like that 5150 level, like low end thump with it. It's awesome. I loved my tone before I added it. Now I can't live without it. And um, Arachnid Cabs, a Sacramento company. They're just all like full, like furniture grade stuff, you know, and uh, vintage 30 Celestians. So that's my speaker for my whole life, and that'll probably never change, you know. It's a, the combination's epic. You know, what people can expect from my expansion pack is just super crushing tones, each one a little bit different, different amps and things like that. But also, you know, aside from like full on brutality, you just back the gain down and you got like a great rock tone. Cause I, I consider the hallmark of any guitar tone I get, can I play ACDC on it? I mean, with my full gain tone, can I bust into like, you know, Highway to Hell and does it sound good? Um, because if big chords don't ring, I don't care about the single notes either. And all of these are like useful for any kind of rock or metal. It's just, but the ability to go full tilt, you know, the, you have the gain on tap. It's awesome. Within my expansion pack, you know, we've got my 1987 modded Marshalls, which are legendary amps, long retired. You know, we use that on. You know, those amps were on Fabulous Disaster. They were on, you know, Impact is Imminent, Force of Habit, and Tempo of the Damned. And on Tempo, that's one cab, one mic straight into the head. It's crushing. Amazing amp, but you know, they're priceless to me, so they don't go out on the road anymore. Um, we have my Triple X, which I used on Shuffleheaded Kill Machine and on Exhibit A. So we have like a preset of that. We have the Engel Savage 120 which I used on Exhibit B and uh, the Jubilee that's on the new album. Obviously, I'm jumping amps a lot on albums because I'm always chasing something different, you know? You 
the thing I enjoy most about the my Tone Hub expansion pack is the feel they have. They feel like a real amp. The low end is enormous. You know, your right hand and the strings and everything responded and they were fast and powerful and it was impressive that the technology could replicate something that took so much time to create. They're really, really, really crushing. I'm super stoked that I'm able to offer these, uh, some of my favorite tones I've ever done. You know, I've been asked countless times by people on in person, on Instagram or whatever, like, when will we have a plug-in? When will we have, you know, your tone to play with? And um, now it's here. So, you know, people are going to be stoked. People are going to dig it. I dig it. Yeah.